Good morning, everybody. This is Mary Catherine at My Own Little House. That's the name of my channel. And today we're going to look at some creative stuff I've been working on. This may interest some of you. It may not interest others. Feel free to click away if this isn't your thing. But I've been making these, a lot of people call them junk journals. I'm calling this a pocket book. I've mentioned this before. I love books with little pockets where you can put things. And I have a lot of little things that need places to be put. <laughs> And, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm trying to get some guidance and instruction. Uh, in this book that I was making, I had um, an old envelope that I dolled up a little bit. And this one was pretty fun. I put some fabric on the front to make a, a pocket. It's full of bookmarks. Um, this one is full of just little cards. I've been making with um, cherry blossoms. Sorry. Eh, it's a little too early. And then I've been painting some little things on the front. Butterflies. Mushrooms. So when you make a diagonal pocket, you end up with something that looks like this. Now I decided to use a piece of an old map. This is a map of the Great Smoky Mountains. And at first I was going to use a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper. This is from a big tablet. Of, so this is a jumbo tablet. It didn't cost very much, and I realized when I got it home it was no fun to paint on. So I may use it for this kind of thing. But this paper is, is heavier than what they recommended, so I thought I'd better start with something lighter weight like this. So now I've taken it all apart, you <laughs> see. You can see the stuff on actually I might redo it so that that's on the outside instead of the ugly text um but I just laid this piece of paper on top of this and cut cut it to 9 by 12. Now I'm going to turn the, the um, camera around. I don't have an overhead camera. Maybe one of these days I'll wrestle one of those up. I don't know. I just um I'm trying to imagine you doing things with a camera over your head. Hmm. But I'll try to position it so that you can see what I'm doing. And um, I'll refold this one and then we'll work on the, um, the bead paper, the watercolor paper. Although I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint one side of it first with flowers or something. Maybe I'll actually do those uh, cherry blossoms on one side, let it dry, and then fold it. That might be fun. But let me show you how to fold this first. For some of you who uh, think this might be hard, Reading it in a book, it's a little difficult, but when you see somebody do it, it's not hard. So let's try this. Okie dokie, this is my second try <laughs> at this because I'm still learning. I've only done this one time before. Um, okay, you're going to make a mark on this piece of paper on the front um, at the bottom halfway through. And I did this with a ruler. This is a nine by 12 piece of paper. And so I just looked at the four and a half spot and the four and a half spot up there. And then you're going to bring the two sides and fold them into the center, okay? Like little pair of French doors. And then you're gonna open it back up. Now you, you do want, this is where you use your bone folder to do these creases. You can use your thumbnail. You could, I, I've often used the edge of a pair of scissors for this kind of thing because it's not too bad. But a bone folder is kind of a fun little special thing to have. Then you're going to open your page back up. And you're going to fold it this way in half. Okay. So you folded the two sides in. And now you folded it like that. Okay. Again, you can do your crease. And then you're going to fold, fold it back this way. So you folded it all the way up at the midpoint. And then you're going to take the front and you're going to fold it back down here. Okay, turn the page. This right here is called a mountain fold and you're going to bring it toward you. And then you're going to take the mountain fold and fold it back to the halfway point. Now this is where this my piece of paper started getting ornery because it had other folds in it for decades. Um, as this little map of the Smoky Mountains, and it didn't like the new folds I was doing. I'm still not sure if it likes it. 
So you're going to take the mountain fold and bring it back to that, this midway point. Okay. There we go. Now you're going to take your bottom two corners. Are we still in the frame? Yes. It's, maybe that book goes a little bit. And you're going to fold them up so that this edge is even with this fold. Remember when you folded that in? Okay. You want this edge, which means that this little thing is going to tuck out here. You're not folding it all the way up to here. You're just folding it so that this is even here. And you do the same on the other side, just like that. Okay. And yes, that's right. Um, okay. So the next thing you do is you take this flap and you lift it that way. All right. Now, and you can see where some of these folds have been before. Now, you've already done the two corners here. Now you're going to do the two corners here. You're going to fold this one up so that this edge meets this crease here. And you do the same on the other side. Okay. So it looks just like that. And then you're going to bring this section back over it, kind of tucking it in like that. And then you're going to bring these two back to the center again, like that. And now you've got some really cool folds. Look at that. Isn't that fun? It looks even better on the camera than it does in person. I like that. Now you can see how this crease here was an old crease from the map and it's not supposed to be there. Okay, so that's, now you've done the bottom half, okay? Now we're going to do the top half. Now, am I still in the frame? Yes, I am. Maybe I could zoom in just a little bit. Okay, and let's get it up there. Okay. Now we've got, oh, now we're going to, what are we going to do? Let me read this first. Now it says, fold the two top corners down so that they meet at the center. Okay, so they were open like this. And notice how they're double thickness, of course. And now you fold them down till they make that point and they meet in the center. <clears throat> this creates two triangles at the top of the sheet. Divide these triangles by folding the bottom edges up to align with the diagonal sides. So we're kind of making a fold to use later. So what you're going to do, can you see? After you folded this down, you're going to take the bottom edge and fold it back up. If you've made a paper airplane, you know what this is like, okay? And you take this one and fold it up. It really does feel like making a paper airplane, okay? Now we're going to do what they call a squash fold. This took me a while to figure out, okay? Opening these, open these up and move the top layer away from, top layers away from each other toward the diagonal edge to create squash folds. Now, how did I do this? Oh, yeah. So you're going to open this front one up like that. Let's do that again. Okay. You folded them in. You folded them back. Now you open it up. And then you lift this. And see this center fold here? You're going to do it that way. Okay. You're going to do it that way. And what you're going to end up with is this nice triangle here with this little thing sticking out this way. And that's correct. Okay. And then you're going to do the other one. Make sure that it will go the right way. Okay. Kind of have to make that middle fold do what you want it to do. Okay. So um, I'm going to do one of them first. And then I'm going to do the other one. And what you want to do is tuck this tip inside this pocket. Okay, let's look at that again. After we've done this and we fold it back, then we open it up. We do that. And then we do the same thing on this side, but we have to tuck that tip in as we go. Okay. And that is nicely enclosed. Holding the two squash folds together at the center line, tuck them underneath. Oh, 
Yes, you do this. Did you see that? You just take the bottom part and tuck it underneath so that you have a nice straight line. Okay, and then you're pretty much done. You fold this up. It has a nice pocket here. You fold this down and tuck it in there. And look what you've got. And if you open it up, you've got all these neat pockets. Pocket here, pocket there, pocket here, pocket there. A pocket here. Pocket in here. So like if you went on a nature walk or outside and you wanted to collect some flowers for drying later, this would be a great place to put it. You could put them in there in many different pockets and then you could close it and fold it flat and you would already be beginning the pressing process. Isn't that neat? All right. I am going to try <laughs> doing this with a piece of watercolor paper, but I'm going to paint it first, so I'll get back. Okay, so I looked up the word ephemera, or actually I asked Google about ephemera, and it said things that are um, just to be enjoyed for a short amount of time. Um, things that come and go, like a little flower in the field, or um, but even things like letters and notes that people, you know, enjoy and then they get rid of. And I have misplaced my glasses, so I'll be right back. Actually, my glasses were tucked inside the front of my shirt, so that didn't take too long, thankfully. I could have been hunting for an hour. All right, now the salt gives a fun texture to that paper. But again, this is paper that I hate to paint on, so that's why I'm using it to make this little diagonal pocket. So I'm not hoping for beautiful results. Now before, no, I think I'll do the flowers. Oh, and this is a good time for me to share with you these pens that I got. Here they are. There's not much English on here. It says, say, Leto. There's 12 of them. Drawing marker. Kusaku. Now, I got them on Amazon. So if you enter that, they're like micron pens. They seem to do just like them, but um, they're not the same. Now, the smallest one is a 005, which I use a lot. But the bigger ones, and they have little diagrams on the back that show you what the little nib looks like on each one. Um, the biggest one that looks like a calligraphy pen is like that. And um, I don't know much about calligraphy, but I used to, I used to kind of do a little bit. When I was a secretary I could, uh, at a church years and years ago, I could kind of make little posters and stuff that looked decent, but nothing fancy. Anyway, um, I wanted to share those with you. So, let me see. Yeah, I'll do this first. I'm going to use the 02. This is a big piece of paper. And I'm just going to do um, the little... Why do I have a problem remembering the word cherry blossom? Um, I'm going to do it just like um, Michelle at the Creative Cove said. So you just start with a center and you do some lines... Can you see that with my, is my hand in the way? I wish I were left-handed, or I wish I could put the camera on the other side of me, but I don't have a platform over there. So anyway, just do some little lines from the center and do some little dots. Now, this isn't the only way to do a cherry blossom, but, you know, this is how Michelle says. I'll, I'll do it like she did it. And then it has five blossoms, so 
you come out and the blossoms are generally shaped like this. Now I tend to make my stamens too long um, compared to the size of my blossoms, I'm sorry to say. So I should do bigger blossoms. It does help that if I were starting out with Michelle's videos and I had no artistic experience, this would be a challenge, but I've, I've been doing such. She's a much better sketcher than I am. Now I'm going to do some full flowers in various places on this and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so here's the sketch so far and I did I think 13 full flowers and then some partial flowers kind of sideways and then lots of buds and I just joined them randomly with little curving lines. There's not any real form or structure to a single plant because it's all going to be folded in a lot of ways. Now I'm going to do some uh, antiquing on this and I'm going to paint the flowers in uh, pale pinks and, and kind of lavenders and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, now I'm just going to wait for this to dry. I could use my blow dryer if I wanted to, but I'll just go do something else for a minute and come back and uh, then I'll do the antiquing on it. Okie dokie. So on the flower side, I'm going to put some of this stuff. Not too much, and I think just on the flowers. Just going to dab it on the flowers. Now, I've got a brush that I have sacrificed to the glitter and it's looking really rough and it's this is an old junky brush and I've got a lot of old junky brushes and I could probably buy some new junky brushes because boy do they sell them at the dollar store but I'm going to use this one a long time this is just glue so I can put it in water and it should dissolve and you know get soft again it's not like it's varnish anyway um so we'll just dab a little bit on Some of these bigger flowers. I don't want too much of this stuff because I don't want a book uh, or even a little. This is just a pocket. This is really just a pocket um, on its own, but I don't want a pocket that's just covered with glitter and going to get all over my hands. Okay, so um, that's why I'm using this instead of the. I got this stuff at the thrift store and man, does it. This is real glitter and it gets everywhere. <laughs> It's a little rough, so we're just going to do a little, just a little. I think that'll do. I think that's got a little bit too much. Let's put some over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough, good enough. Let that soak a little bit. Okay, um, so now we have, as usual, you have to let things dry. Why is life full of things that have to dry? 
I guess you could call that curing. Okay, we'll let this dry and then I'm gonna flip the paper over and do some fun stuff on the other side. Even though it won't show much, it is important for the whole thing, I think, to look fun. And then we'll come back. Now you may wonder, why in the world I'm starting a new hobby when I already had hobbies? <laughs> Too many hobbies? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know. I think in August this year, I just really wanted to, um, August is my difficult month because of the heat. And so I, um, I wanted to do things that were just fun. I didn't want to do things um, with the pressure of getting my soap and lotion business ready for the market in the fall. And I didn't want um, the pressure of, you know, yarn and woolen projects on me. It's not that I'm not going to do work on those things, but I just did, I wanted to have something, I wanted to also do something purely for creative purposes and nothing else. And that's why I'm doing this stuff. I've had to acquire here and there some different products to help me do this. I'm so thankful that Adam already had some. He brought some big paper over here. It looks like it's, I don't know, 11 by 20 or something. It's big old sheets of paper he was using for making books. Um, okay, so we got that side. And now I think, where's my little stamp? Now I'm going to use this stamp a lot. using it with a stamp. This is a very old stamp pad I've got. Um, wow. From Jackson, Mississippi. Probably when I was in high school. You can see how rusty it is. And this is one that has a fabric and not a foam base. And so, um, but it still works. Adam has lots of ink because he likes to use fancy pens that he fills with ink. And, um, Okay, that's probably good enough. I'm not going to work too hard on this side, but I'm going to give it a little bit of antiquing. What I like about this, uh, what is this stuff, Distress Oxide, is um, it's not wet, so you don't have to wait for it to dry. It's not like paint. Sometimes I do paint instead. I did it on one of those cards. I painted a very light brown underneath, almost like I did this side. Um, okay, that's probably enough. Well, that's all, all I'm going to do because, as we know, I'm going to be folding this. And now is the time to fold. All right. Well, that doesn't do much good. You can see what kind of condition my cutting mat is in. Adam thinks I need a new one, and he's probably right. The edge down here lifts up. This was his, no. This was his old one, or I think this is one I got at the thrift store. I don't know. But it was used. Either way. Oh, no, I'm doing that the wrong way. Oh, I probably should have done those words the other way. Well, anyway, where's my pencil? Now we're going to try this folding stuff again. <laughs> and I better get my book out because there's no way I can remember to do it when I've only, how to do it, when I've only done it twice. So we will do that, okay? And as you would expect from a book about folding, this is a book that when you open it up, it stays open to the page. It doesn't flop over. I didn't have to crack the spine to get it to do that either, which was quite nice. Okay. Whoa. Now, again, this uh, paper is thicker than it's supposed to be for these purposes. But, like I said, it's just B paper that I don't like anyway. So, if I totally ruin it, it doesn't matter. And the emphasis is not on... Oh, I didn't do a good job on that. Look how, look how off that 
that is. That's going to make a difference. Ooh, come on, you get over there. Mm, man, now I know why they don't want you to use this kind of paper for it, because it does have a lot of folding involved. But we will do our best. Can't do better than that. Let me do this one first while I'm holding it. That looks better. I don't even know how to use one of these because I've never used one before. Okay, so we did that. Open it back up. This is important. I used to try to do this, and that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to open it and then do this. I hope I'm still in the frame. I think I am. This helps to give you a real crease and not one that has all these little, you know, partial wrinkles in there. Okay. And then bring the top layer back to the folded edge and make a mountain fold. I really do like both of these sides. All right, my next page. With this, and now I'm supposed to get that out of the way. Okay, I've got those done. Temporary fold this up, and then fold these up to here. harder than you think with watercolor paper. Okay. Um, bring the section back. And then fold these in. Whew. Okay. Now I will say, that's pretty thick down there. That's what that's supposed to look like. Okay. Now fold the two top corners down so that they meet at the center. Like that. I like the idea of painting my folding pockets before I make them, but then you really, I guess I could use mixed media paper, but I don't know that it's, it's somewhat thinner, but it's not like text paper. It's not regular paper. It's not matte paper. So I don't know. We'll have to see what this, how this functions after I'm done with it. I can tell I can't be as accurate because like you see up here, I'm not, that's not quite as it should be. So um, we'll see. Okay. Fold the two top corners down. Put them back up. No, don't put them back up. Then do this little paper airplane fold like this. All of this is harder for watercolor paper. Okay. I didn't know watercolor paper was so sturdy. You can really rough it up. Okay, open these up and move the top layers down. Like that. I just wonder, see how you can scrape it off some of this. That's okay. Let me do this one on its own. 
think I made that fold inadvertently and didn't do a good job there. So I think that's the trickiest part for me. So this has to be underneath this. Okay, and then this lays on top of this and this tucks in there. Whew. You see how this is just harder with watercolor paper? Mm. Okay, oh, I think I did that. Then holding the two squash bubbles together at the center line. Oh, yes, you do this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so thick. I don't know if a bone folder is gonna work on that. And it prevents unfolding, it says. Okay, fold the lower portion of the pocket along the pre-creased fold here. This is really thick. And then you tuck it in that way. Oh, I will say though, it's kind of super cute. Hmm. That distress part right there, that's the one spot I didn't like and it shows the most. It is nice and thick though, I mean, for keeping stuff. It'd be even more durable than the other. Let me see if this looks exactly like the other on the inside. See, I don't think I did it right. You see how this is here? I didn't do that right. I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out. I did something wrong there, and I'm gonna, that's why it's so thick. Anyway, but it should come out looking a lot like that. I think that that's real cute. You could even, well, if you uh, if you had a good enough hole puncher, you could punch a hole here and a hole here and have some kind of a little ribbon tie. That would be nice. Um, yeah, I like that. Well, I think that's it for today. Didn't we have fun doing this? Give it a try. Just find some paper you like and cut it to a 9 by 12 instead of trying to find a 9 by 12 and um, decorate it a little if you like, but try to keep it low key because it's going to be folded up like this, okay? Thanks for joining me and I will see you for the next video.